All right, so today I want to do some ball python egg cutting on a clutch of one egg. I actually just got one good ball python egg from my female clown ball python. Kind of the interesting thing about that girl is when I first paired her up last October, I usually pair her up on October the 15th, so it's been quite a while since I paired her up. But when I paired her up, she had some really good body condition. She was eating really well up until the moment that I paired her up with the male. And it seems like as soon as I paired her up, she completely went off of food which is usually a pretty bad sign you really want to get a lot of food into them at the beginning of the season so they can really get that body mass up so they can develop a lot of eggs and if they go off of food a lot of times they'll just completely slug out and you'll get like a whole pile of infertile eggs and this time, sure enough, she pretty much laid a whole pile of slugs with one good egg right in the middle of all those slugs. And I put it in the incubator, and today I actually peeked in there, and it looks like it's starting to hatch, which is pretty exciting. As a matter of fact, this is actually my very first visual clown that I produced in my collection. I'm breeding my banana inchy clown to my clown, so we'll at least get a visual clown. And it seems like the last few years, I've been doing, I've been working on my triple het projects, you know, trying to do like a, like an albino pied to my clown to produce the albino pied clown triple heads. I've been pretty much working on that. I haven't really been breeding my clown to my clown, so this is the first year. And of course, she slugs out pretty much the whole thing. I'll accept one. So the, the options we can actually get as far as the offspring, we can get clowns, of course. We'll at least get a visual clown. We could get enchi clowns. Sometimes enchi and clown is a little bit tricky. Sometimes the clown can be pretty reduced, but usually if you add the enchi in with the clown, a lot of times it'll really reduce the pattern and sometimes it'll actually give you more of a yellow color in there too which is kind of interesting. We can also get some banana clowns and some banana enchi clowns. And kind of the interesting thing about my banana is my banana is actually a male maker, which means that all the offspring that we get with banana in it will all be males. All the offspring without the banana gene will all be females. So I'd say pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time, you'll actually get the males and the females that way. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've been breeding Coral glows and bananas. Coral glows pretty much the same thing as banana. I've been breeding them both through my collection for the last five years. I probably produced maybe 50 coral glows and bananas uh, in combinations. And out of all those, I've had pretty much all males except one female which is, you know, sometimes they say like 99.9% .9 of the time you'll actually get all males from a male maker, but it's actually possible to get a female. And I actually kept that female. <laughs> I'm actually raising up that female. So if you breed a female, uh, all the males from that female will actually be female makers. So I'll actually be able to finally produce some female bananas here in my collection eventually a few years down the road. So what I want to do is I want to pull that one lone egg out of the incubator and I want to cut it open and we'll peek inside to see what the results are. And the other thing is I want to show you the parents, uh, the male and the female that produce that egg. Kind of give you an idea of what the offspring should look like. All right, so here is the female that laid that one lone egg and all the other slugs. Her name is Bambi. And I actually got her from someone else. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was at a reptile show a few years ago. I think it's been about four or five years <laughs> since that reptile show. And for some reason, they actually put a table right next to me. I was selling snakes at the reptile show, and they actually put a table right next to me that had ball pythons. <laughs> so I was like, ball pythons next to ball pythons. Luckily, we didn't have a lot of the same snakes, so it wasn't really a big issue. But I kept looking over at his table thinking, man, that's a good-looking clown female, and the price is right on that one. And I actually ended up buying it. And kind of the funny thing is, is when I bought her, she, they said that it was one of the most aggressive, one of the most bitey snakes that they've ever had as far as a ball python hatchling. And I just held this girl for like, like an hour nonstop. And she finally relaxed and got really friendly just holding her for an hour. I think she was just never really held that long. 
That's why she was really scared. But if you actually look at kind of the pattern on this one, it almost has like, uh, almost like alien heads, you see, kind of like uh, almost floating alien heads or kind of, you know, sometimes you get a little bit of streaking. But normally if you add the Anchi, it'll really wipe these out and really bring the pattern just up to the top. Sometimes you'll have, you know, a pretty much clear area towards the bottom where it completely wipes it out. But I've actually seen just straight clowns with a really reduced pattern. So sometimes it can kind of trick you as far as uh, just looking at a clown to see if it has Enchi in it or not. This one obviously does not have any Enchi in it. Really good looking snake. And she does, you know, she's back on food. She's got some pretty good body condition as far as just laying eggs and coming back on food. But hopefully uh, she'll keep eating. She's kind of a stubborn eater, I'd say. Uh, she kind of comes off of food and goes back on food. And the guy that I bought him from, he's pretty much doing all live food. And a lot of times you, you start feeding live for the beginning part of their life and sometimes they get stuck on live. And it's hard to transition them over to Frozen Thought, but she's doing really good on Frozen Thought. Every now and then I'll sneak her alive if she gets really stubborn just to kind of keep her going. But I prefer doing Frozen Thought. But this is what they look like. Usually they have a really strong head stamp. You'll see they have kind of an interesting head pattern. Usually when you add other jeans, a lot of times you can tell by the pattern on the head as far as what other genes, a lot of times if you add pastel, a lot of times it'll really shrink the pattern on the head to just a really small pattern. Pastel has some really dramatic effect when you, when you mix it in with clown. All right, so that is the female. Let me show you what the male looks like. All right, so take a look at this beauty. This guy's name is Pasta. He is my male banana inchy clown. Uh, this is the most I ever paid for a snake. <laughs> I paid $1,500 for this guy years ago, of course. I don't know if they're that expensive. I haven't looked at the, the market on these, if you can even find them over on Morph Market. But yeah, sometimes sometimes the prices go up. Sometimes they really come down pretty quick. Uh, and this guy's kind of interesting. When I bought him as a hatchling, he had a lot of really high contrast between the pattern on top and the sides. It was really more clearly defined as far as the pattern. And as he aged, a lot of the contrast has completely gone away. He's really faded out quite a bit. This guy's just one big noodle. <laughs> I actually have a, a lesser clown that's kind of the same way. It was a really high contrast when I was younger. And uh, that's where I got my lesser triple hats from. It's actually a female. I bred it to my albino pied last year. Got my lesser triple hats, which is pretty cool. So the other th interesting thing about this guy is usually if you have a uh, banana, as the age of mature, you get a lot of these freckles that develop. So a lot of times you get a lot of freckling over your bananas. And it seems like when you add clown to your banana, uh, you'll actually reduce the amount of freckling. Almost completely eliminates the freckles. Uh, I didn't think this guy was going to freckle at all until just recently you start seeing a little freckles come in. But it's kind of interesting how different genes... If you actually add black pastel to the banana, it actually increases the amount of freckling on the snake, which is kind of fascinating. Uh, you'll notice that my hand is all beat up. <laughs> I got my worst snake bite this week. Oh, I actually got bit by a reticulated python and two adult ball pythons all in the same spot on my hand. Oh, it's absolutely excruciating. That third bite on top of the other two bites, that was the worst. Almost brought me to my knees. Whew. I usually don't get bit that much. You know, sometimes I only get bit like once a month. But yeah, <laughs> it seems like, you know, now that all my snakes are starting to go back onto food, I'm actually yeah, in, in a lot of danger from getting bit. You know, they come flying out of the tub instead of hitting the rat. They actually hit my hand, which is kind of crazy. All right, so let's pull that one lone egg out of the incubator and cut it open and see if we can get another one of these beauties or a clown or an inchy clown, which would be pretty awesome. All right, so I just looked at my incubator. Looks like in another six days, I'll have two boxes that are hatching. 
Uh, one is a bamboo or blue eyed leucistic. Maybe I'll get an all white snake or some bamboo combinations. The other one is uh, my other completely scaleless combination. Maybe I'll get another scale, a completely scaleless snake, which would be pretty awesome. All right, so this is it. Banana Nancy Clown crossed with a clown. Let's see what we got here. Drum roll. And, ooh, I see a nose sticking out. I see a little nose. Take a look at this. Ooh, take a look at that beauty. That's pretty nice. Let me move this box out of the way. Maybe we can get a picture for the thumbnail. Uh, what do you think it is? What do you think? What do you think? I might not even need a scissors for this one. <laughs> Uh, you can see there's no banana. The banana usually gives it a really orange color. So, yeah, kind of interesting. I don't know, can you see any enchi in there? Maybe. Maybe you can see some enchi. Uh, I might have to cut it open. See what it is. But yeah, usually when one egg gets the, the little slits in it like that, usually that's the, the key for me to actually go in and start cutting them open. I usually don't start cutting until they actually start cutting with their egg tooth. At least one egg in the clutch. Usually I wait till like two or three eggs are, are being, you know, sliced with that egg tooth before I'll go in and cut it. I'm thinking maybe there's enchi in this one. It kind of looked like it just from the pattern on the head. I'm thinking, oh, I got stuff all over me. <laughs> all right, let's see. Uh, it's one big goopy mess. I'm sure once we cut it open, we'll know for sure whether there's anchi in there. So I can tell you for sure, 99% chance this is a female. Uh, let me take a look here. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about this one. That might not be an inchy. <laughs> I'm not too sure on that one. Maybe. I'm thinking, well, uh, maybe. I'm thinking it's inchy. I'm thinking it's an Enchi Clown. What do you think? It's so hard to tell. <laughs> it's so hard to tell on these. Uh, but I'm thinking the reduced pattern. Uh, the other thing that kind of gives away the Enchi, I've been kind of looking on uh, Morph Market. If you actually look at the head, a lot of times with the Enchi, you'll actually get those little circles on the head. You'll actually see right there. But I don't know, it's so hard to tell on these. I would say, if I was a, if I was a betting man, I'd say there's Enchi in that one. So I think that's a female Enchi clown. So that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it for the egg cutting. All right, so what I want to do is I want to put it back in the incubator and uh, wait till he completely comes out and then we'll take a closer look at him and we'll put him up. Uh, in the hatchling rack and give them a name. Usually I do this like in batches, but this guy's like in the middle of <laughs> different clutches. Like I had a clutch like a week ago or something like that that I was doing videos and then uh, I won't get another one for a week. So this is like halfway in between my two clutches. Just kind of a loner out there in bull python land. All right, so that's pretty much it. Good looking snake. Will I keep this one? Maybe. I might actually keep it since I only have one female clown. This might be my second female clown. Even if it's Enchi or not. I think it's Enchi. It looks like it. Looks like it's uh, got a little bit of yellow too. A lot of times you know, with the Enchi you'll get some yellow too. Alright, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'll post this one up on Morph Market or not. I got some, I got some albinos that I'm posting up on Morph Market. Albino head pods that are, that are ready to go. I also have some retics, some baby reticulated python super dwarfs 
that uh, that uh, I'm going to start posting up there too. I have kind of a general post for my retakes, but I don't have the individual snakes listed. All right, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.